What's going on guys, Nick Foy here from Under30Wealth.com and today's real estate investing video of the day is going to be talking about how to determine rental prices in your market. So as a real estate investor who's thinking about buying property to rent out to tenants to earn rental income, one of the questions you're going to face is how much can I rent my property for? So before you buy a property, you need to know how to research it and figure out what it can rent for. So to do that, we're going to use Zillow as a resource. It's an online resource. You go to Zillow.com and they're going to ask for an address right here. And you can also see where you can select rent. So we're going to pick rent and then I'm going to type in Miami-Dade County, Florida to go down there as an example for this video lesson. So once they pull up your address uh, or your city, as I would start with the city to get a broad range. And then you've got these different tabs up here where you can set criteria. So if the house you're looking at is a three bedroom house, then you want to come here and set it to three or more bedrooms. And then home type, if it's a condo, an apartment or a house, in this case, we'll assume single family houses. Then you can set how many bathrooms it has. So if it's a three bedroom, two bath house, square footage, you can get more precise. Uh, but I'll typically will just, you know, kind of leave this a broad range to see what all kinds of houses are going for that are three twos. You can put days on Zillow, lot size, year built. So these are the basic parameters. And then we don't want to set a max rent yet. So we'll take that out because I just want to get a range of what houses are going for. So here in Miami, there are lots and lots of rental properties in every you know, section of Miami. So it's gonna vary based on what part of Miami you're in. Same with your city, you know, what each neighborhood could vary significantly. One neighborhood could be renting for $2,000 a month. Another neighborhood could be renting for $1,200 or $800. So that's why you wanna pull comparable rents that are nearby your subject property. So. Let's say, for example, that we have a house down here in Homestead. So this is almost as south as you can get in Miami. So as we start zooming in to some of these neighborhoods in Homestead, we can start looking around and you're seeing, you know, 1300, 1300, 1500. We've got a 1600 or 1550. Some of these are in the 2000s. And then let's go over here into these neighborhoods. So as we zoom in, let's just assume, for example, we have a subject property that's in this neighborhood that we're trying to rent out. So looking around the neighborhood, since there's lots of rentals for rent in the same neighborhood, we can see 2100, 2400, 17, 18, 19, 19, 18. So somewhere between 1700 on the low end and it gets as high as 2400. So you can kind of cross those out and know that it's somewhere in between, probably 1900 to 2100 for this neighborhood would be a good rent uh, that you could go with. So that's how I would start, you know, trying to find rents of a specific neighborhood in your city is just zoom in to that neighborhood that you're thinking about buying a property in and look around the same streets and see if there's other properties for rent in that neighborhood. And if not, then you might have to zoom out some more and you'll start picking up some rentals in other neighborhoods that are nearby. As long as it's within a couple miles of your home, it should be a pretty good rent comp. If you live in a small city, there won't be as big of a rent spread. Like in Miami, for example, since that's a big city, there's big rent spreads. So there's parts of Miami that might rent for eight or 900, and then there's other parts of Miami that might rent for three or 4,000 a month. So that's got a huge spread when you're in a big, expensive coastal city like Miami. But in small towns like the town I live in, you know, rents typically are around 600 to $1,000. So it's a lot smaller spread. So if you're wrong, you know, you're only gonna be wrong by 100 or $200 where you know, pricing a house wrong in Miami could be a lot bigger consequence, but it's kind of hard to price a house wrong. You'll know, you know, one of the first ways to do it is to get on here and just do some general research and you'll quickly get an idea of kind of what stuff's going for. And that's going to help give you an idea. And then when you go price your home, put it on the market for rent, you'll know if it's priced too high. I always recommend starting high and then coming down. That way you don't underprice yourself. 
So if you start high and you know you put it up for 2400 let's say in this neighborhood and you get no phone calls, then you know, you know, maybe it's that there's just not a lot of buyers that can afford that rent or maybe you're a little high priced for that neighborhood. So in that case, you could start coming down, you know, to 2300, 2200. After some more weeks go by, maybe you start getting phone calls finally at 2100. So that tells you then, you know, you're starting to get down into that price range that's that's rentable. So those would be the two strategies I would use, you know, start off with doing some online research first, looking around your city, get familiar with what the rents are. I'd also adjust this so you could go down to two bedroom homes and see what rents are for. Another resource would be to contact a real estate agent, ask them, you know, what kind of rent could this property get? And they could use the MLS or just from their knowledge and their experience working the markets day to day, they might be able to give you an idea of what things could rent for. Zillow also has a Zestimate for the rent that may not be accurate, but it's, you know, a place that you could start. So let's zoom all the way in until we get so as we zoom in further, you can see all these numbers start popping up. So this shows you that, you know, this is what Zillow's estimating rent could go for these homes. So obviously it's right around that 2000, 2100 range that I mentioned for this neighborhood. And Zillow's probably getting that idea because there's all these other homes that are nearby going for 22 and 2100. So because of that, Zillow automatically pulls those that data that's similar homes nearby and that's how it's able to price out these homes so as we look at all these homes you can see it's almost uniform they're 21 21 21 2000 2200 you got some 1900s here and there so that gives you a really good idea that you know this neighborhood obviously is going to be between 1900 to 2200 so do that in your city you know zoom in on the specific neighborhoods and Z zillow will give you an estimate rent then you also want to see what actual landlords are trying to get rent for their properties, not just some estimate that Zillow is telling you. So these are actual rents people are trying to get. So that should give you a good starting point. Then from there, talk to your real estate agent and get their opinion. They should be able to help you out. If you have to, call you know two or three different real estate agents and get multiple opinions. And then if you call some for rent signs, you could talk to some landlords and kind of see what they're running their houses out for if you see if you're driving down the road and you happen to see a for rent sign but yet you don't see it online then call that sign ask that landlord what they're running the property for how many beds baths it is so you got to do some research but it'll pay off because you'll get a more accurate picture of what the rent is and then from there you can start running your analysis on the property to see what kind of return on investment you're going to get because once you know how much you could rent for then you can start subtracting out property taxes insurance maintenance repairs utilities all the different expenses you're going to have owning that property and then you're going to be able to come up with what kind of expected net income that property is going to produce after you subtract out all the expenses and from there, you'll take that net income and you'll be able to divide it by your investment in the property to figure out your return on investment. So that wraps up this video today on determining rental income of a property in your city. Hop on Zillow, do some research, then talk to a real estate agent, talk to some other landlords and get everybody's opinions, including Zillow's opinion. And from there, you can start pricing the home out and running the analysis to see if it's going to be feasible as a rental property or not. And if so, buy the property, stick a sign in the yard, start your rent higher. And if you don't get a lot of phone calls, then just come down and rent price until you finally hit a, hit a selling point where you get lots and lots of phone calls of interested tenants. And that will tell you that you finally found the hot spot for that neighborhood. So thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button. I'm uploading videos every single day. So if you turn on notifications, you guys will be notified when I upload a new video tomorrow. Take care.